Hi everybody, uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about how the MACD works in terms of the advanced ideas of uh, basically uh, divergence, convergence, uh, how to use the histogram, uh, study some more advanced ideas on signal crossings, um, and also zero crossings uh, with the MACD line, um, and basically just uh, the general details about how to spot uh, different kinds of uh, uptrends and downtrends uh, within uh, divergence and convergence and some advanced ideas. Hope this really helps you out. So there are two types of uh, trend analysis that you can do with the MACD. There's basically short term and long term. Um, and the short term uh, analysis is typically done just by looking at the MACD itself. Uh, and you can see that here there's a short term uptrend and then there's also an uptrend. Um, now a long term analysis is done by looking whether or not it's over the zero line or not and how much time it is over that and then which signal you're looking at. So how long of a term uh, depends on which signal line you're looking at. So if you want super long term, you want to look at the signal line. Uh, and if you want uh, long term, uh, kind of medium term, you just look at the uh, just the white line or the MACD line. Uh, so what typically happens is that on the short term, you almost never have a divergence. Um, it's usually on the medium term or long term. So on the longest term, um, you'll have the most divergences. Um, and you can basically see the trends uh, the best uh, using the signal line. So the red line here you can see is general has been going down. Um, so the trend, long term trend is down. So you have a divergence here because basically this line, if you look at here, basically is a downtrend until about here, um, according to the signal line. Um, and even to here, you could say it is downtrend, but it goes up a little bit here. So uh, a divergence is basically when you have uh, opposite. So between the long term and the short term, uh, or the short term and the long term, uh, you can see that there's a divergence uh, between them because one is going up and the other is going down. So here on the long term it's going down, but you have an uptrend. So you know that at some point uh, the shorts are probably going to win this, uh, but you didn't really know that ahead of time, but you kind of knew that ahead of time. Uh, at this point you probably would have said uh, maybe even down to here, uh, so it would have looked pretty bad on the downturn, and then it would have looked up, but you have a signal crossing as well. So <clears throat> what this tells you is multiple things, uh, and you got to think about all, all the aspects of how the MACD works in order to interpret it. So one way to interpret this is that on this line, I'm going to go to a lower time frame, and you can see some different details here. Um, let me just load this up so we can start to look at this. It's a little bit harder to see. You might have to go back. So on the daily chart, you can see that the average low, the kind of the, or the maximum low that you get for the daily trend is in this area. So we should expect some kind of turnaround uh, in this range. So the MACD probably should stay uh, within this range here. And it got just too low here and even too low here. Uh, so you can see that there's maybe some expectation for a bounce here of some sort. So once you see the signal crossing, you can say, aha, uh, maybe there's a chance here that there's going to be a new upturn. So if I zoom in on a 60 minute chart back to that same time frame, this is that same uptrend here. It's kind of hard to see what that uptrend is, but you can see basically that's the uptrend that we were talking about on the other chart. Now, what happened here is that you can see there's a general uptrend on these lines, right? So if I draw a line here, you can see that's uptrend and downtrend, but in general, this is slightly more of an uptrend. So you can say that there's going to be, it actually expected that uptrend to be in this area, uh, but I didn't draw the, I would draw the lines at the maximum points. If this one was to be drawn a little bit more correctly, you know, back in here, we would have maybe even drew, draw, drawn it like this, because we didn't have the vision of the other, other numbers necessarily. So we could even say that that uptrend could be predictable from the trend lines around here using this on the MACD. So by charting this, we can kind of start to predict uh, where that trend might break. So this says it would break potentially on the downside um, because it's crossing below the zero line. Um, so that's not quite correct. Um, so we would have to look at the actual details here on the MACD during that period and it actually showed a crossing the other way. So if you look carefully at how I do these lines, I didn't call it draw them properly, so I maybe have to draw them up a little bit more for continuing on this peak here, just to be proper on that, and then do this peak 
proper here, kind of in between the peaks. Uh, and then you can see it does break on the positive side, but not quite till later on down the road, which is actually incorrect. Uh, so basically we'd have to draw these a little bit better uh, lines to kind of see, and hopefully we'd end with a point near here. So technically these lines, this line and this line, uh, I'll draw a different color here so you can see what I'm talking about. The blue's a little bit easier to see. So the blue line should intersect right in here somewhere. And this line should intersect right about in here. So basically it could be that this peak wasn't quite analyzed properly. And this wasn't quite... So the valuation of this particular... So we can go back and study this carefully because we know that this particular drop was a little bit too far of a drop um, for the and, and especially this one as well so compared to what we saw on the turnarounds to the point so we saw that this should be the point right here and now that's correct so we can see on a vertical I change this to a yellow on a vertical we're right at this point here and that's 513 that's the turnaround date precisely um, so this helps us go backtrack and we can see into the past where the peak is a little bit too high or a little bit too low. Now there are multiple ways to read the MACD. A lot of people would debate this with me, um, but there is uh, technically other ways uh, to read the MACD. So uh, if you're looking at it a little more carefully and a little bit more on the advanced side, you have to use the zero crossing. So the zero crossing actually is very important for the MACD. It depends a lot on what you specify the terms for the MACD, so the fast MA, slow MA, and the signal period. Now I use 816 and 16, which is very similar to the default settings. Um, and uh, it turns out that it looks, because it's an exponential moving average, a lot of the MACD signal lines will look very similar no matter what you type in uh, for the numbers um, because it's exponential. Um, but it does look slightly different depending on what you use. So, for example, if I changed uh, the slow period to 32, you can see just it kind of changes it a little bit. Um, and you can see I'll change it back again here to the 16. Now I use 16 because it's a little bit faster and I like to see details um, within the MACD that show up only on uh, smaller, shorter time frames. But you can see both of them generally tend down in this trend here. Um, so you can see that that's pretty much the case. Um, now this peak to peak you can also see is down here. So you can see that we pretty much would expect to see some kind of downtrend coming up pretty soon um, because this peak didn't quite reach the peak of the previous peak. Um, if it did reach it above that, then you'd know that's definitely, definitely a sign of an uptrend. So uh, peak to peak analysis is another major thing that you wanna look at um, or uh, valley to valley analysis. Uh, so to be perfectly clear, you have the red line, which is the signal line, and you have the white line, and both of those can cross zero. Now, obviously, the uh, signal line is slower than the uh, MACD line, uh, and so what I do is I, I specify mine by eight minutes because that's the amount of time that takes light to reach the Earth and the Sun, and then 16 minutes is the amount of time to get from the Earth back to the Sun again, so it's a 16-minute full interval. Uh, but I just use that as a as a gauge to kind of give me um, some extra, some, <laughs> some uh, star-based uh, and universal-based signal patterns. Uh, so one of the interesting things is you can say that because this is all on the positive side here of the MACD, you can say that's pretty much considered an uptrend even to this point. But after this point, it's not considered an uptrend anymore uh, technically on the fast oscillator. So. Basically, right around here uh, is when you have this downtrend, but it still it still didn't make it. It only made it a couple couple steps lower so into the downtrend, uh, and that's partly because the uh, signal line wasn't at zero yet either. It was actually quite high still. So if the signal line and the uh, MACD line are both above or below zero, then it means the trend is pretty strong on that side. So where does that start technically on this graph? Well, it starts right around in here. You can see the trend definitely is pretty negative because both lines are on the negative side. And you can see right in here, 
uh, that's indeed where the negative side did start. Now the crossing was here, um, so you might want to use the crossing uh, instead of when they do both of them, but it's a little bit more risky than taking both of the lines. So when you take both of the lines, you know that for sure that the signal is definitely that it's definitely going to be a downtrend from that point on. So uh, from this kind of analysis, we can only see that the MACD gets to about negative 23 or so on the daily chart and then positive uh, 32 or so or 33 so maybe even lower here maybe 39 uh, is the lower side of this but uh, when it gets that low you know you can definitely expect a balance of some sort uh, and that could be definitely used to help you uh, gauge whether or not you think it's going to be a bounce so like in the current time frame I'd have to bring this all the way back but I bring this all the way back uh, I'll bring it to the daily chart really quick here. Now the daily chart says this is about this is about negative forty eight or so, right? And you can see that there's definitely some other lower points, but on the daily chart, negative sixty eight is pretty much the lower point that we have here, and then the positive point is about which should be similar to the negative, maybe usually typically the positive one will be higher because the market generally tends up. This is about 63 here. So anything above that range we know is definitely gonna be a little bit on the extreme side and we should be wary of the price. Now the good news is you can also use the signal, or excuse me, the histogram. It's histogram. So the histograms are a little bit easier to use uh, than the uh, lines for that. So basically what I could do is I could do a horizontal line here um, I could just do a green horizontal and then now I have histogram lines about there and then this histogram is a little bit more negative so you can say that it's probably been a downtrend uh, for most of the thing because just because the the histogram has been primarily negative at least on, excuse me there's been primarily positive for this part uh, but the negatives have been pretty low um, so that's another way to debate uh, what's going on with the graph um, so before you get too crazy on all these MACD signal analysis, one thing to realize is that the MACD line itself should basically correspond to the ups and downs of the actual signal line, right? It's really a relativistic indicator that gives uh, a statement between A periods and 16 periods like I have here or whatever numbers you specify, right, for the fast and slow. So it gives you some kind of estimate for what's going on within that time frame. Um, but it also can tell you a vague idea for the big picture as well. Um, but it won't necessarily match up exactly. That's why you have the value of looking at these ideas of divergence and convergence. So like when we see uh, that there's a 16 period or a period uh, divergence, typically that will show up on a lower time frame. But what you can do um, is you can say that anytime the divergence shows up with the histogram, then you know that you're going to have a lower time frame divergence. Um, so basically what I mean by that is that this shows red here. Um, so this is all red, meaning that it's actually converging between this line and that line. Um, so that means that there's going to be a lower level convergence uh, or divergence, excuse me, because this is going down and then the price is going up. So we know that ahead of time we saw that this was probably going to happen. It looked like it was going to maybe happen here, but it didn't because there's green lines that showed up here and then we definitely knew that it was going to happen by here because we saw reds already coming we saw and then we saw reds again and then we started to see a bunch of reds all in a row so then we see all these reds hidden here now this is actually like an ashy chart so you can do uh sometimes you can see a little bit better the divergences uh in the regular candlestick chart and i do use both of them from time to time uh just to double check so again, when you're trying to do advanced analysis with the MACD, uh, you want to look at essentially the uptrends and the downtrends within the MACD and then check for convergences or divergences. And that's what we talked about right here where we have one that's going down and why the other was going up. So that's a divergence, right? And then we want to study all the MACD crossings. So not just the signal and the, uh, signal and the uh, MACD crossing, but also the crossing with zero as well. Um, and wherever it crosses, it's going to be an important, important statement um, uh, to, to, to look at. Uh, and so one thing to keep in mind is anytime we do have a crossing between a signal and a MACD, we're going to see a zero crossing 
on the histogram. So this is a zero crossing. And again, we have a crossing here. We have a crossing right around here. And then we should have a crossing here as well. We see a zero crossing right in here. Another advanced strategy for using the MACD is using the uh, actual numbers on the MACD and comparing them uh, with other indicators. Um, so for example, here we have uh, a MACD value of about four on the positive side, and then on the negative side, we have a MACD of about uh, negative 2.25 or 2.8. Um, so we can compare that with, say, the average to range. So here we have an average to range of about two points, um, right? And so you can see that um, the MACD does hit down at levels of about two points here on the negative side, and then it gets on the positive side of about three points, uh, five points, or something like that. Um, so you can use these numbers to kind of gauge where the where the where the how many points up or how many points down potentially something could drop. So here, for example, we have. Uh, about a three point, uh, a three point uh, high on this. So we can start to gauge that in terms of how many points we want to be up above, uh, and potentially on the next round uh, when this MACD starts to bounce back up here. Uh, so the way to do that in charting is to say here is the high point, uh, and then to estimate approximately how often these these uh, jumps happen, which is about over into here. So if I estimate here, that'd be a vertical line, and where these two intersect is approximately where we'd expect that MACD to hit uh, in the future. Um, this particular example is a difficult example because it shows uh, basically the, the after hours trading versus daytime trading. So in the daytime, we have higher volume and higher uh, average to range, whereas in the nighttime, we have a much lower range. So it's hard to say whether or not it would even make it to that point, it might only make it up to like here at best uh, on this particular example. So typically what happens uh, at nighttime is that these, uh, the average range will become lower and then as well as the MACD will also start to oscillate closer to the zero line, meaning there's not as much fluctuation. So here you see a pretty flat level um, and you can see also in here, there's some pretty flat levels here, uh, both the MACD uh, and the chart, and then you can see in this area, pretty flat level, pretty flat level, and then uh, kind of a price change in here. You had some dropping, but this is also uh, maybe it's due to some after hours changes and some other things. Uh, so one other quick example here. So when the MACD shows a number, so here it's about two, negative two, uh, and if you draw the lines between here and here, you'll see that that's about six points. Um, so, but basically there's a six point up and six point down, essentially if you look at the actual details here. So this candle shows, it goes all the way down and then back up again. And this one went from high and all the way back down again. So uh, basically it is a little bit of a debate um, on the numbers, but essentially they should correspond. Um, so if you see a number here, it should be approximately what you're gonna get uh, for the movement on the, thing for the time interval and that's based on uh, essentially how many uh, ticks there are between 8 and 16 here uh, and then comparing the two moving averages um, so you have to uh, kind of uh, estimate uh, what the numbers are uh, but you can get a pretty precise number if you'd like um, so here's another quick example of this. On a 60 minute time frame, you can see that the value here is about 15 or 16. And if you draw the horizontal lines between here, you got a 3950 and a 3966, which is essentially 16 points, which is right about where it says the number should be right now. So, um, but basically since that's tapering off, it's actually the slope of this that really gives you the actual idea uh, for what's going on. And if you have a debate about this kind of stuff right at the end, you know that that's the slope. These, this slope is pretty consistent all throughout here. So that is approximately about 16 or so, uh, and it can be even 10 at the start of this because there's some upward and downward movements here. So it basically does change a little bit. And then in that area, it's zero because it's not upwards or it's upwards and down. Uh, and that's kind of how that number works. 
Anyway, so there are a whole lot of other indicators. Uh, another one that I really like is the Klinger Volume Oscillator, and I'll try to talk about that at some point. Um, but as you can see, it works very similar to the MACD, except for it's based on volume. I also use the Stochastic Momentum Index, Euler Force Index, uh, which is essentially price times volume uh, and giving you an estimate of the force behind a move. And I also use the Chinkin Money Flow. Uh, money Flow is pretty calculated just based on price and volume as well. Uh, and it's pretty helpful. And then I use just a standard volume chart to see what's going on with the volume uh, at any particular instant. So I hope this has been a helpful study of the MACD. Um, we looked at a lot of different things uh, from convergence to divergence to signal line to the MACD line to the various different types of crossings uh, and just comparing uh, different intervals and numbers uh, on the MACD uh, and how to do that uh, across periods and different uh, details. Um, so anyway, I hope you've really enjoyed this study. Let me know if you got any questions. I'd be glad to try to help you out. Um, be sure to subscribe and like this video if you want to have some more information. Thanks.